Welcome back again. Today I will talk about non-deterministic Turing machines and their implications in some sense in computer science. Okay, so so far we have uh, defined the Turing machine to be a deterministic machine. So when we say nothing but just Turing machine, we assume that we are talking about deterministic Turing machine. And if you really want to highlight that you are talking about a deterministic Turing machine, you can also use DTM to highlight that the determinism is what you want to uh, project. Like other uh, automata, finite automata, pushdown automata. So, Turing machines also have a non-deterministic version called the non-deterministic Turing machine or NTM in short. <coughs> Let us first see how uh, the notion of acceptance, rejection and uh, language of a non-deterministic Turing machine can be uh, handled. Now, the difference uh, between a DTM and an NTM is that in a deterministic Turing machine, a delta P, comma A, that is the transition function, is single valued. That is, given any P, state P, and any tape symbol A, delta P, comma A is something of the form Q, comma B, comma D. But Q is the next state, maybe the same as P. B is something that is uh, that overwrites A on the tape cell and B may be equal to A and D is the direction of movement of the head, head right head, left or right. For a non-deterministic machine, we specify the transition function not as a single valued uh, possibility like Q, B, D. Instead, I have a set of possibilities. Delta P comma A can be Q1, B1, D1, Q2, B2, D2, and so on, up to QK, BK, DK. And K is the number of possibilities. It is allowed to be zero. Okay. So if K is zero, that means, as earlier, as happened for NFA and uh, DPDA, the machine, when uh, is in state P, reads A, and there are no transition possibilities. We say that the machine has got stuck in state P. And this state P need not be the accept state or the reject state. It can be any state. So a non-deterministic Turing machine can get stuck at any state. So it's not exactly halting. In a sense, it's halting, but not exactly so. We call this uh, phenomenon getting stuck. On the other hand, if k is 1, this is just a unique possibility of making a transition at this situation. Otherwise, if k is greater than or equal to 2, then the machine chooses one of these modes, this to this, or this to this, or this to this, non-deterministically. Okay. So now, as usual, the machine starts its operation in the start state, a distinguished start state with the input written on uh, its tape. If it has multiple tapes, we can assume that uh, it is written on the first tape at the beginning, and the machine is in state S, the distinguished start state. Then, it keeps on making non-deterministic choices one after another. Eventually, if it can ever reach a uh, configuration where the state is the accept state, then, yeah, then we say that the machine has accepted the input. Okay, so this is another important thing uh, that we will use later in the last slide. The maximum value of k over all possible choices of P and A is called the fan out or the maximum fan out 
denoted by f for this machine. Okay, so I'll come back to this fan out thing uh, in the last slide. Okay, so now let us come to the uh, come back to the uh, question or uh, question of acceptance. So the machine accepts if and only if some sequence of non-deterministic choices lets the machine end up in the accept state. Now what happens to other non-deterministic choices? They may or may not lead to the accept state. Even when that input is accepted, other non-deterministic choices may actually fail to reach the accept state. In fact, there are several possibilities. Other non-deterministic choices may lead to the stuck condition, the looping condition, and it is also possible, even when the input is accepted, some choices may lead to the reject state. Okay. So, this is very, very important to note that the machine accepts if and only some sequence of choices lets the machine reach the accept state. If other sequences of choices leads the machine nowhere, it does not matter. If only one sequence succeeds, we say the machine has accepted. This is very similar to NFA or um, <coughs> PDA. NPDA. Yeah. So now we uh, introduce a very important uh, concept computational history of a Turing machine. For a deterministic Turing machine, of course, there is a unique history for every input. But for non-deterministic Turing machine, the computational history uh, is not necessarily unique. So, each sequence of choices gives a computational computation history. Okay. Each history starts with the start state okay, or the start configuration. And then the machine keeps on making non-deterministic choices one after another. And a sequence of configurations is uh, generated, which is called a computation history on the given input. Now, what happens to a history? It may be finite, it may be infinite. If a history terminates in the accept or reject state, then definitely it's a finite history. It is also possible that machine, because of uh, making some possibly some bad uh, non-determinism guesses, uh, ends up in some stuck condition, then also the history is finite. Because after that, the machine does not know what to do. However, if the machine uh, loops, or if some choices of uh, the uh, non-deterministic moves leads the machine to uh, loop, then this leads to an infinite history. So, in terms of history, the um, acceptance condition is like this. The Turing machine accepts if and only if there is a finite computation history ending in the distinguished accept state. Okay. Even when the input is accepted by uh, a non-deterministic Turing machine, there may be other computation histories which end up in the reject state or in the stuck condition or it may even have infinite histories for some sequence of choices. But if there is only one uh, <coughs> uh, finite computational history ending in an accept state, in the accept state, I would say, then the NTM accepts the input. And what about rejection? So, explicit rejection is something like this. All computational histories are finite. So, that means each computational history ends in either this one of the states or the stuck condition. But if it ends in the accept state, then definitely the machine accepts. So, all computational histories are finite and none ends in the accept state. So, some may end in the reject state and some may 
end uh, in any other state in the stuck condition. On the other hand, implicit rejects, that is looping for a non-deterministic machine is defined this way. First, there should not be any accepting history. Okay. So, along with one or more infinite histories. Okay. So, there may be a few um, finite histories ending in the stuck condition, but looping essentially implement, uh, imply that at least one infinite history must be there. So, that is implicit reject. So, the machine keeps on making non-deterministic choices one after another, but never get stuck or end up in the accept or reject state. So, that is implicit reject. So, rejection by looping. Also, this uh, behavior says that a specific reject state is perhaps not needed for a uh, non-deterministic Turing machine. Right, because uh, explicit reject or rejection via getting stuck, they essentially have the same uh, effect in terms of acceptance and rejection. So, for a non-deterministic Turing machine where um, getting stuck is allowed, a specific reject state is of, of course not always needed. Okay. But definitely we require an accept state. Otherwise the machine cannot accept. Good. Now, once we have uh, a notion of acceptance by a non-deterministic Turing machine, its language is defined to be the set of all input strings that the machine accept, accepts. Okay. It is exactly the same as other machines. And a non-deterministic Turing machine is called total if all histories on all possible inputs are finite. So, there are no infinite histories which imply uh, looping. So, an NTM is total if and only if all histories on all inputs are finite. And how are these histories, uh, I would say, arranged? So, we typically arrange the histories. Each history starts with uh, the initial configuration. And if I consider the sequence of all histories starting from the initial initial uh, configuration, you may have multiple choices. Go there. So, this is one history, this is one history, this is another history. From here, it, you may have a couple of choices. So, here, 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 this is one history, here, 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 there is another history. So, we represent all the histories <coughs> of a non-deterministic Turing machine on a given input uh, by a computation tree of configuration. So, I will come to that and a picture of it very soon. But before doing that, let us do, let us see <coughs> an example. This is a very important example, a non-deterministic compositeness test. So, the task is uh, given an n in, let us say, unary, like a power n, you want to, or the Turing machine wants to determine whether n is composite or not. So, I will design a two-tap non-deterministic Turing machine for recognizing this language. And we will see that this machine is going to be a total non-deterministic Turing machine. Okay. So, uh, the input is as usual supplied to the first tape. And the other tape is used for detecting a non-trivial divisor D of N. Okay. That is why, that is how the machine uses the second tape. So, initially what the machine does, it just makes some uh, small uh, input checks. Like if N is 0 or 1 or if N is 2. 0 and 1 are neither prime nor composite and 2 is prime, so neither of these values uh, is uh, composite and therefore reject and halt. So, during this process, the machine uh, copies two A's from the first step to the second. Now, of course, copying does not mean uh, the machine deletes uh, from the first step. 
it returns everything in the first step. Only some number of A's are copied from the first step to the second step. So if the attempt this copy fails, that means if there are not enough A's, that is N is 0 or 1, then definitely uh, this is not composite, the input N is not composite. Or after two copies, if the head on the first step is pointing to a blank symbol, then also this is a case of prime, the smallest prime, machine rejects and holds. So you assume that N is greater than or equal to 2, that is, there are more A's remaining in the, remaining on the first step. And at this point of time, both the heads are pointing to the third cell. Okay. The third A in the first step <coughs> and the first blank cell in the, or on the second step. Good. Now, there is, up to this point, there is no non-determinism. It's the unique behavior. Okay. Now, this is a non-deterministic copying stage. So, as long as there are more A's left in the input, the machine makes a non-deterministic choice among two possibilities. The first one is copy another A to the second step and move both the heads right by one position. Okay. And the second choice is you simply break this non-deterministic copying stage and go to the division stage. Right. So, that means for after the um, A's are copied from the input tape or the first tape to the second tape, the machine may make two possibilities, uh, may, may go through two possibilities. It may copy the D plus first one from the first step to the second step or it simply goes to the division stage. Okay, so now let us see the division stage. This is once again a deterministic uh, stage. Only dot determinism is here. Okay. Now suppose that D number of A's are copied from the first step to the second step. So now all the machine has to do is to find out whether the number of A's on the first step, that is N, is an integral multiple of the number of uh, A's, that is D, copied to the second step. Okay. And that process is fairly straightforward. This time, uh, okay, so this is another check. Now, if D is equal to N, then you have copied everything to, from the first step to the uh, last step. So, in that case, uh, finding N as a divisor of N does not prove the compositeness of N, so reject and halt. Otherwise, let us say this is not the degenerate case. You keep on subtracting D from N. Now, this time, subtracting D from N essentially means make a pass through this uh, second uh, step and a simultaneous pass through the uh, first step. For every A you find the second step, remove one A from the first step. Keep on doing this and if some subtraction run erases the entire first step, then definitely N is a multiple of D, accept and halt. However, if some subtraction run prematurely ends, that means you are trying to erase some A on the first step, but you see that there is a blank space, whereas on the second step you are still pointing to A and A. So you have not erased everything. So in that case, so the number of A's uh, uh, that are, uh, I mean, uh, skipped on the second step, so that is the remainder, that is uh, non-zero, so reject and halt. So, the non-determinism in this example lies only in the choice of D. Okay. You can see that this make machine <coughs> is capable of non-deterministically generating all possible values of D in the range 3, 4, 5, 6, up to n minus 1. It also generates n, but that is a reject case. If any one of these d is a divisor of n, that is if n is a multiple of d, integral multiple of d, then the machine accepts. But it 
very much allowed that the machine has, uh, okay, let's say it's 60, n is 60, let's say. So, um, so the values of d that will succeed are like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 10, 12, and so on, right? Whereas if you take something like 11, 11 does not divide 60, so this uh, sub some subtraction, subtraction run will run, uh, will end prematurely. So although 11 says no, it's not composite, 2, 3, 5, 4, 6, they will all say yes, it is composite. Therefore, even if some choices of D leads to the machine to reject, there are choices because 60 is composite, there are choices that uh, let's the machine say yes, it is composite. On the other hand, if you get some uh, 61 or 59 something, some comp non composite thing, some prime, then no matter what D you uh, non deterministically choose, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to, if it is 59, up to 58. No sequence of uh, choices here will let the machine stay accept. So, all subtraction runs end prematurely. So, it's reject. But, fine. <coughs> now, it's an important thing. Now, what power uh, this uh, non-determinism offers in the uh, class of uh, recursively enumerable languages, we will see none except for one question. So, in order to prove that, in order to prove that every non-deterministic Turing machine can be um, simulated by a deterministic Turing machine, we need something like configuration. Anyway, we know that uh, the non-deterministic uh, uh, Turing machine generates a computation tree of configurations. So, each configuration must be specified so that it can be understood by a Turing machine. Okay. So, configuration is what? Three things. Irrespective of whether it's a deterministic machine or a non-deterministic machine, the future work of a Turing machine depends on three things. It's got its state definitely, state of the finite control. Um, then, what is written on the tape and the position of the head on the tape. So, it's a triple. Okay. An element of Q, the set of all states. An element of gamma star. And some non-negative integer. Okay. So, we can, for example, specify it like this. P, comma, U, A underscore V. So, that means A is the position. Okay. P is the current state. So, underscore says that the head is currently pointing to this A. To the left of A, there is some string U coming from gamma star. To the right of V, there is something coming from gamma star. Of course, we are ignoring the infinite number of blank cells that follow this lead. We may contain some, some, some blank cells, but uh, in the class we have seen, we have written something like blank to the power omega, where omega is that if not. That is implicitly understood. It is there. Okay. So, underline represents the position of the head. Good. If in addition we assume that the set of states and the set of uh, uh, tape symbols are disjoint, then I can avoid writing this underscore under symbols, but instead what we will do, we will simply write this as, we will absorb both these things as U, P, A, V. So, whenever this string, this is the string over Q union gamma star. So, in fact, if it is a valid configuration, it must contain only one element of uh, Q, P, 
and whatever that symbol that immediately follows P, that is the symbol where the head is pointing to. Okay, and U and V are things that are uh, to the left and to the right of that head position respectively. Definitely with this convention, if W is the input, the input state is, the input configuration is, initially the machine, the head is pointing to the uh, left end marker. Okay, so I will use a different left end marker symbol because I did not find that uh, symbol used in the book in my typesetting package. So I will use this symbol. So, so it is pointing to this. W is written there. After that, there is nothing. I mean, only blank cells. And we uh, decided to write the state immediately before the position of the head. So S start state. And an accepting configuration is definitely U T A V, where T is the distinguished accept state. And regardless of what U and V and A are. If the state is T, it's an accepting configuration. Yeah, so now let us see how a deterministic Turing machine can simulate a non-deterministic Turing machine. Okay. So these are very important theorems. For every non-deterministic Turing machine N, there exists a deterministic Turing machine D, such that the language of D is the same as the language of N. Moreover, for every total non-deterministic Turing machine N, there exists a total deterministic Turing machine D, such that the language of D is the same as the language of N. So, I will supply only one proof. This proof works for both the cases, total or not. Okay. So, only one conversion process suffices. So now I was talking about computation configuration tree, a tree of configurations. So this is the computation tree. So C0 is the initial configuration. And let's say at that point of time, there are three choices, C1, C2, C3. And at C1, there is, there is only one choice, C4. Choice at C2, there are no choices. So it may be an acceptor, reject, uh, this may encode uh, a, an acceptor, reject state or a position where the machine gets stuck. C3 has two choices, C5, C6. C4 has two choices, Cf, C7, C8. C5 has uh, three choices, C9, C10, C11, and so on. Okay. So, in order to simulate this code, in order to generate this tree of configurations, the deterministic Turing machine, the simulator, proceeds like this. It has two steps. On the first step, the deterministic simulator writes these configurations in a breadth first fashion. So this is C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, C10, C11 and so on. And in order to um, separate one configuration from another, the deterministic Turing machine uses some hash. So it's a separator between uh, two consecutive uh, configurations. Then what the machine does, so one by one, it generates this queue. Okay. So let's say up to this point, okay, up to this point, it is generated. Okay. So, C4 means C4 is considered C7, C8. C5, the blue thing, is now the active configuration. Now, the non-deterministic Turing machine has all the transition, sorry, the deterministic Turing machine has all the transition possibilities for NTM under the condition written in C5 in its head, right? So, let's say there are three possibilities. So, it makes three copies of C5 here, here, here. And looking at these three um, possibilities, it converts this copy to C9, this copy to C10, this copy to C11. And then, one by one, it, the deterministic machine puts C9 here, hash, C10 here, hash, C11 here, hash. Okay. 
So it's easy to see that this simulation is perfect. Not only that, it's very much within the capability of a Turing machine. By looking at C5 at the transition table of the NTM, the non-deterministic, the deterministic Turing machine can definitely generate C9, C10, and C11 from C5. Right. So in words, this is something like this. D has the information of N in its finite control. So D is a deterministic tuning machine that is going to simulate a given non-deterministic tuning machine N. So D has the information of N. In particular, its entire transition table. D is a two-tap machine. The first step is used to implement a queue of configurations. And two consecutive configurations are separated by a hash. The second step is used to compute the next configurations from N. And at any point of time, there is an active configuration, which is basically the front of the queue. Okay, we look at this. After this C5 is processed and the C9, C10 and C11 are generated, the C5 is ignored. The front goes to the next configuration. So, one of these hashes is marked. Okay. Here by a blue color, but in general it may be some hat or something like that. Okay. So one of the configurations is active and denoted by a marker on the preceding hash. Maybe hash hat or blue hash, whatever. Now, initially the input of N is supplied to D on its first take. Okay. And D knows S is the start state of N. What it does, it generates the initial configuration S followed by this input W and having this uh, end marker symbol staying in between. Okay. So, this is the initial configuration. So, it generates that initial configuration on the second step and copies hash C0 hash to the first step. So, this is the first enqueuing on the first step. Okay. Then the machine enters a loop. Find the current active configuration CI. If there is no such active configuration, that is the queue has actually become empty, then reject and halt. Otherwise, find out what is the state P of N from CI and which symbol it is scanning, the head is scanning. So P followed by A. This must be somewhere there uniquely in CI. Okay. Then it consults the transition table of N which is in its head. Okay. Fine. If P is T, immediately accept and hold because this configuration says that N has already reached the accept state. So D also accepts and holds. Otherwise, it looks at the transition table of N to find out how many possibilities are there. Q1, B1, D1, Q2, A2, D2, sorry, B2. It should be B2 anyway. QK, BK, DK, all these things. Okay. And it makes, it also counts how many possibilities are there. Okay. So it makes, if it is K, it makes K copies of CI to the second step, one by one. Again, separated by hashes. And now looking at each of these possibilities, it converts each one copy to the next configuration. Okay. It converts each copy by a transition possibility. Okay. And so it generates maybe from CI it generates CJ, CJ plus 1, CJ plus 2 up to CJ plus K minus 1. And then it copies these things, these new configurations back to it at the end of the first step. So this is enqueuing at the back of a queue. Okay. And when CI is completely processed, this end marker, uh, this uh, active uh, hash marker, when CI is completely processed, for example, here C5 is completely processed, C9, C10, C11 are generated and copied, this marker is moved from this hash to this hash, indicating the next configuration to check is C6. Fine. So, 
there is there should not be any question about the perfectness of the simulation right whatever n is supposed to do d is doing by implementing a breadth first traversal of the computation tree of n on the input w fine so d makes a breadth first traversal in the computation tree of n on input w okay so you can think about where the depth first traversal will also work. This is actually an exercise given in this exercise set. You will see. Moreover, if n is total, what does it mean? Computation tree is finite. There are no infinitely long branches for n in the computation tree. Therefore, for any input of course. Therefore, this breadth first traversal will eventually end. In other words, eventually that q on the first step of d will become empty and d's d will also stop okay if n is total then d is total so you do not need a special do not uh, need to exercise any special care to handle the second theorem the same simulation will work okay now let us recall about that fan out thing what is the maximum number of possibilities of transition from one configuration to the next set of configuration k maximum value of k and we denoted that by f and called it the maximum fan out okay so now suppose some n is total and n is the maximum number of steps in a computation history okay so that is the height of that computation tree basically the longest path length from the root to some leaf node Assume that this is total and n is that height, let's say. And of course, we assume that it's a truly deterministic, uh, truly non deterministic uh, Turing machine that is f is greater than or equal to 2. If f is 1, then it's very similar to uh, deterministic Turing machine, except possibility, uh, except, the, except for the possibility of getting stuck. Anyway, so we assume f is greater than or equal to 2. That is, there are some possibilities, some non deterministic. Now, non-trivial, non-deterministic choices. If so, and if the tree is of height n, then how many, I would say, nodes, a maximum number of nodes in that tree will be 1 plus f plus f square plus up to f power n, right? So, one node in the root, at most f nodes at level 1, at most f square nodes, in level 2 and so on and the height is n so at most f power n configurations nodes in that computation tree at height at level n and if sum it up f power n plus 1 minus 1 by f minus 1 this is standard dp series and um, so the point is that this d may have to generate all of this configuration Right. Maybe it is too lucky that it generates the configuration uh, and see that it is the accept state. But in the worst case, when n is going to reject, d will have to generate all of these configurations. And then eventually when its queue becomes empty, it simply rejects and halts. Okay. So we say, but the running time of this non-deterministic machine is n because n is the length of the path from uh, the root to anywhere where the machine ends its operation. On the contrary, the running time of d is big O of this is f power n, right? f is after all a constant. It comes from it's the maximum fan out. Okay. So what is the specification of n is look at that there is a finite number of uh, delta p a things okay take the maximum of f so it's a constant and assume that get, it is greater than equal to 2. so it is l times f power n where l is the longest configuration of n okay now this is the big question this non-deterministic running time is n on the contrary the deterministic running time is exponential n n. 
Okay. That is the important question. It is not known whether this exponential slowdown of the simulation can be avoided. Of course, in some cases it can be avoided. But is there a general rule that gives us a simulation better than this exponential in n? This is the million dollar question of computer science, whether p is equal to np. Okay. So now n is polynomially the input size, non-deterministic running time, whereas the deterministic running time is some constant times a polynomial in n. So that is exponential. Okay. So what is non-deterministic polynomial time becomes with this uh, blind simulation becomes exponential time deterministic simulation. So, the big question is whether we can avoid putting n or moving n to the exponent in all cases. In some cases, of course, we can do, but can you do it always for all problems? So, that is the p equal to np question. Fine. So, once again, there are uh, a few exercise sets. Please try to uh, few exercises in this set. So please try to solve this as many as you can. And my suggestion all. Good. So this is all about uh, non-deterministic Turing machines that I wanted to say. Uh, and the next lecture I will cover unrestricted grammars. So see you until then. Bye.